Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. One of the most important lists in QuickBooks is the chart of accounts. You can access this list by selecting lists and then chart of accounts from the menu bar. The chart of accounts is a listing of all of the accounts available to use in your company file. These accounts track all incoming and outgoing money and tell you how much you currently own and owe. When you set up your business in QuickBooks using the Easy Step interview, you get a default list of accounts. Once that has been done, you will probably need to make some changes. You can add, edit, inactivate, delete, and rename accounts to change their information. The general way you perform any of these tasks is to first select the account within the chart of accounts that you would like to change if needed, and then click the account button in the chart of accounts window. From the pop-up menu that appears, you can then select the desired command to perform. Handily, in any list that you can access from the lists command in the menu bar, you can always rely on being able to click the button in the lower left corner to be able to perform the basic list management tasks. The button is always named the same thing as the list in which it appears. So, for example, the account button is the one you click to perform list management in the chart of accounts. The item button is the one you click when using the item list, and so on and so forth. For example, assume that you wanted to add a new savings account that you just opened for your company to the chart of accounts. First, open the chart of accounts window, and then click the account button in the lower left corner. From the pop-up menu that appears, choose the new command. This will open the new account window where you will enter the account's information. First, you would need to select what type of account this is from the type drop-down at the top of the new account window. Technically, a savings account is an asset. However, in QuickBooks, when working with asset accounts that have a cash basis, like checking, savings, petty cash, and others, you will want to assign the account as a bank account type to note its cash nature and also be able to use it in the various transaction windows. Next, you would need to enter a name for the account into the name text box. For now, after we have entered the name, just skip the subaccount of checkbox and dropdown, as we'll discuss creating subaccounts separately, and the account that we are creating is not a subaccount of any other main account. Now, next, you can enter an optional description of the account into the description text box. If desired, you can also type the bank account number into the bank account number text box. You can then click the OK button to create the new account and close the new account window. Optionally, if you want to continue creating new accounts without having to close and reopen the new account window, you could click the Next button within the new account window to create the account and clear the new account window. You can then enter the next account that you want to create. And this button is available in most of the lists where you may have to create multiple items in a single session. Also note that you could click the Cancel button if you wanted to close the new account window and not create the account. This button is also available in most list entry screens as well. Another question that is often raised at this point is what should I enter for the opening balance when creating a new account? Actually, you only use this section of the new account window when creating accounts in your chart of accounts that had a balance as of the start date of your company, entered when you created the company file during the Easy Step interview. If you're creating an account that did not have a balance as of your company file start date, then you simply skip this section. However, if you need to create an account that did have a balance as of the start date of your company file, you can enter the opening balance of the account as of the start date into the opening balance text box. Then you can select the start date from the as of calendar selector. Then you can either click OK or Next to save the account. The amounts entered here are attributed to the opening bal equity account in the chart of accounts, which is why we don't want to enter opening balances for any accounts that are created after the start date. You can also create subaccounts of accounts within the chart of accounts. You can then attribute transaction amounts to specific subaccounts of a main account for reporting purposes. For example, if you had an automobile expense account, you could create subaccounts of gas and maintenance repairs 
to easily show the different amounts spent on gas versus repairs and maintenance for company vehicles. You could also see the total amount spent on automobile expenses within a report. The balance of any account that also has sub-accounts is the total of all the transactions attributed to the main account, including all balances of its sub-accounts. You create a sub-account in the exact same way in which you would create any other type of account within the chart of accounts. Just ensure that you have the primary account for which you want the sub-account created first. The only difference when you are creating a sub-account versus a primary account within the new account window is that you check the sub-account of checkbox and then choose the primary account for which you want the account that you are creating to act as a sub-account. Note that sub-accounts must be of the exact same account type as their parent account. So for example, if we were going to create a gas sub-account for the automobile expense account, we could select the account, click the account button in the lower left corner, select the new command, and since we're creating a sub-account of an expense account, we're going to select expense from the type drop-down, type in the name for the account, check the sub-account of box, and then select the primary or main account then click OK to create the sub-account. Now if you wish to edit the information associated with an account in the future, you can always edit the account to add to or change the account information. In this case, you would first need to select the account that you want to edit within the chart of accounts. Next, you would click the account button in the lower left corner of the list and then choose either the edit command if using a version previous to 2005 or the edit account command if using 2005 or later from the pop-up menu that appears. If you like to right-click then you could also just right-click on the account that you want to edit and then select either the edit or edit account command depending upon which version of the software you're using. Next you will see the edit account window appear. In this window you can edit the account information and then click the OK button to close the window and save your changes. If you accepted the default income and expense accounts when creating your company file, you may also have accounts that you would never use listed in your chart of accounts. If you have an account that you would like to delete shown in the chart of accounts, you can delete it, but only if there are no transactions associated with the account. Once there are transactions assigned to an account, you can no longer delete the account, as that would ruin the financial information. You would first need to remove the transactions from the account, either by reassigning each transaction in the account to other accounts, or by deleting them entirely if incorrect. After there were no transactions left in the account, it could then be deleted. To delete an empty account shown in the chart of accounts, first select the account. Then click the account button in the lower left corner and choose delete account from the pop-up menu that appears. In versions of QuickBooks previous to 2005, the command was simply delete versus delete account in the pop-up menu, but it functions the same way. After selecting the delete command, you will need to click OK in the message box that appears in order to permanently delete the selected account. If you have an account that you used at one time in the past but no longer actively use, you can inactivate it to hide it versus deleting it and changing financial information. When an account is inactivated, it will not appear by default in your chart of accounts. However, the information is retained for reporting in QuickBooks. You can actually make items in almost all of your lists inactive to hide items you no longer use. In the chart of accounts, you can inactivate an account by simply selecting the name of the account to inactivate. Then clicking the account button in the lower left corner of the list window, select the make account inactive command from the pop-up menu that appears. The information will then be hidden from view within the list. We will examine making list items inactive and reactivating them in more detail in a later lesson. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.